Okay, so hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Corneau oligopoly. And I'm going to show how to solve for Corneau Nash equilibria, starting with the general case, and then I'll have a numerical example as well. Okay, so question, how to solve for Corneau Nash equilibria? Well, like I said, let's start with a general case. So we'll start with an inverse demand of P equals A minus Q. So what is this thing? Well, A is the vertical intercept, and then Q is going to be the market quantity. Right, so Q, market quantity, is going to be comprised of the, uh, the quantity produced by each of our Corneau firms. In this case, I'm thinking of a duopoly, so let's just define Q equal to the sum of Q1 and Q2, where Q1 is going to be firm 1's quantity, and Q2 is firm 2's quantity. And clearly, as we see, the larger is the quantity that firm 1 brings, the smaller is the amount that firm two is going to be able to bring to the market. Because at a certain point, if Q gets larger than A, what happens? That's right. No one will buy. Uh, OK, so we'll assume marginal costs are constant at C. And the first thing I want to do is write down firm one's profit as a function of quantity. right? So I'm going to write down a profit maximization problem. Just like with all other market structures, perfect competition, where you'd set price equal to marginal cost, uh, technically, price equal to marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Or monopoly, where you set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. That is exactly what we're going to do here. It's just buried into a different, it, it, to, to make it look a little bit different. So I'm going to write down the firm's profit function. as a, a Profit as a function of quantity. So here is profit, pi, profit of Q1. So profit is a function of firm one's choice. This is firm one's profit function. This is going to be what? This is the revenue portion, price times quantity, minus the cost portion, right? So if you differentiate, we get what? Marginal revenue minus marginal cost, or, you know, first order condition, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So again, this is just our familiar set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost thing, but it's built into a different structure. Let me explain that. So P of Q, that's a function, that is this right here, right? This, I could actually have written this in function notation. This should be price as a function of quantity. Great. And what is this? Well, this is nothing other than A minus Q1 minus Q2. And then quantity, well, the relevant quantity is going to be firm 1's quantity. I actually should have probably had some subscripts there. Uh, anyway, and then minus marginal cost times firm 1's actual quantity. So this line right here, the second line is firm one's profit as a function of firm one's own choice. Right, so then what I'm going to do is just a little bit of algebra to make this to clean this up. Actually, if I was going to if I was going to do this for real, I would uh, I would write this a lot more concisely. But this shows how okay. So I've distributed the Q, great, and I've got an a Q one, and I've got Q one squared, and I've got Q two times Q one minus C Q one. Okay, great. And so then the next thing we want to do is take the derivative with respect to Q1. So this is going to give us, this is going to uh, take into, this is going to take into account the fact that firm one is maximizing their profit by choosing their quantity. So let's find that optimal choice. Let's find the optimal Q1. So we'll take the derivative with respect to Q1, and this just becomes A, and then 2Q1 minus Q2 minus C is equal to zero. So I'm going to solve for Q1. Right, I'm going to find the Q1 that makes this statement true. And so this is going to be Q1 is equal to A minus Q2 minus C over 2. And this is actually firm 1's reaction curve. Look, this is firm 1's choice of Q1 as a function of what firm 2 has chosen. OK, so let's just write this as a reaction curve. So let's write this as a, as a function. So Q1 is a function of Q2. And my comment here, this gives firm 1's best response to firm 2's choice. Right? What's firm two's choice? Q2. Okay, right. So here is firm one's reaction curve. Now, since the demand was price is equal to A minus Q1 minus Q2, and the coefficients here were one, and since they shared the same common marginal cost, I just I didn't say that, but let's just assume all firms in this industry have the same marginal cost of C. Uh, therefore, we have symmetry. And so we could just recognize that whatever is firm one's reaction curve, firm two has to, has to have one that looks just like it, only it's going to be Q2 as a function of Q1. So I wrote this. We could just take Q2 as a function of Q1 and write A minus Q1 minus C over 2. 
could do that in this case because we do have symmetry. Now, if we had some, if we had a coefficient here like two, or a coefficient here like two or three or something, or whatever, maybe less than maybe integers, or I mean fractions, or if we had non-symmetric marginal costs, if one had a marginal cost of two and the other had a marginal cost of three or something, well, then things would work a little bit differently. But since the problem is the same regardless of what perspective, which firm we take as our as a perspective. Uh, we could just adopt this reaction curve for firm two. Okay, but let's actually do the work and convince ourselves that that's accurate. So I'm going to write out firm two's profit as a function of their choice. So here is the profit to firm two as a function of Q2. So I have A minus Q1 minus Q2. And then what's the difference? Here is Q2 rather than Q1. And then here is C min or minus CQ2. Okay, so let's take the partial with respect to Q2. And when we do that, we get something that looks uh, eerily familiar, right? So here is firm two's reaction to firm one's choice. This gives us firm two's best response to firm one's choice of Q1. Okay, so, so now that we've got each firm's reaction curves, each firm's best response functions, we've actually got a system of two equations in two unknowns. And if we solve this system, what we'll actually you know, technically find is a fixed point. We're going to find a point where we're going to get a Q1 and we're going to get a Q2 such that when you evaluate the respective uh, reaction curve, you will get the uh, you get the the correct Q1 or Q2 back, however the case may be. I'll show you that in a second. Anyway, so we've got this system of equations. Let's just plug one into the other, right? So how do you solve a system of equations? Well, by substitution, works as good as anything here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to drop in rather than Q2, I'm just going to write in Q2 as a function of Q1. Oh, I'll just put this right here. Now I've got a statement that only has one variable, the Q1 I'm interested in. And so this part right here is just some just some algebra. I'm going to multiply both sides by two. Okay, so now I've got two Q one equals a minus this uh, this uh, ratio minus c. I've got to multiply through by two once more. So I'm going to get four Q one equals two a because I got to multiply this by two and this by two uh, minus this thing in parentheses minus two c. And then I'm going to clean this up and I get what three Q one equals a minus C or Q1 is equal to A minus C over three. And in this in this uh, sort of very simple Cournot model, you're always gonna get this expression for firm one's optimal quantity and, and firm two's optimal quantity, A minus C over three. Whatever is the vertical intercept of the demand curve, minus the marginal cost divided by three. And there's a more general, so for the more general Cournot, uh, you could get an expression just like this. Um, it's a little bit, it's a, a little bit more involved, and we could have done that, but you know, but why bother for now, right? So, okay. So, and then I said by symmetry, we get the same thing for Q2, right? So you could have solved this thing. I mean, clearly, right? So you could have solved this. You could have solved. You could have got an expression all in terms of Q2, and then solve for from two's optimal choice. Okay. So let's convince ourselves that we have gotten a fixed point, right? Let's convince ourselves that we've found our Cournot-Nash equilibria. If that's true, if this actually is an equilibria, or equilibria, equilibri equilibrium, if it is, then when I evaluate each firm's reaction as a function of this choice, this quantity, it should kick out A minus C over three. So let's try that. So let's take firm two's function, uh, choice as a function of firm one's choice. So rather than Q1, I'm going to drop in A minus C over 3. And it's just a little bit of algebra. Multiply through by 2. Multiply everything through by 3. And then clean up and solve for Q2. And sure enough, if you do that, it checks, right? Of course it does. We're going to get, so if, if firm 1 is choosing A minus C over 3, firm 2 is going to be choosing A minus C over 3 as well. So indeed, we have found our equilibrium, our stable point. Okay, and this is this is true for the general Cournot, or for well for this version of the general Cournot where we have what coefficients of one right here and a marginal cost of c. Okay, so we could find the profits that result. So to find profits, we need price. So well, that's easy because we have a demand curve. So let's take a minus uh, two times a minus c over three. Right, this is the quantity from firm one, quantity from firm two. And if you run through this work, you'll find the price is going to be a plus 2c over 3. Great. So then our profit is price minus marginal cost times quantity. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and run through. And if you follow on the algebra, I think I, I cut some corners here. Uh, but anyway, if you if you work through this, you will get profit of a minus c over three that that quantity squared, or a minus c squared over nine is going to be our Corno individual firm profits. All right, wonderful. So, but let's do a numerical example, right? So a numeric example. I'm saying let's suggest or let, let's take a situation where we have demand curve is price is equal to 12 minus Q1 minus Q2 and marginal cost of 3. So first thing we want to do is we want to find find our Corno quantities, our equilibrium quantities for both firms, and then we want to find our profits. Well, since we've done the general Corno and we know that this is of the same form, we know what our equilibrium quantities are going to be, right? So Q1 is going to be A minus C over 3. Well, A is 12, C is 3. So it's going to be, what, 12 minus 3 over 3, so 9 over 3. So our equilibrium quantities are going to be 3, quantity of 3 for each firm. That's just using this relationship here, right? And then our profits should be, what, uh, A minus C, that thing squared, divided by 9. So A minus C, oh, it's a 12 minus, uh, 12 minus 3. Uh, so what? So nine squared nine. So our profits are going to be nine each. And let me actually, sure enough, it works. Yeah, good thing, right? Okay. So, but so you know we can't just rely on using that formula or the, using that definitional relationship. What we should do is actually do the work here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me write down the profit function. So I'll write profit as a function of firm one's choice. Firm one's profit as a function of firm one's optimal quantity. So 12 minus Q1 minus Q2 times Q1 minus 3Q1. So running through the algebra to clean this up, well, so we're going to have 9Q1 minus Q1 squared after distributing, right, and, and taking consideration of the fact that we're going to have 12Q1 minus 3Q1 gives us 9Q1 minus Q1 squared minus Q2 minus Q1. That's just algebra. I haven't done any calculus yet. Now we're going to find our first order condition. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to Q1. If we do this, we have what? 9 minus 2Q1 minus Q2 equals 0. Solve for Q1. And then we have Q1 equals 9 minus Q2 over 2. Right. So here is firm 1's reaction to firm 2's choice. This is firm 1's best response function. By symmetry, right, firm 2's best response to firm one's choice is going to be q2 of q1. Ah, this is terrible. Sorry about that. This should be clearly a one. Let me put my mouse there so it looks kind of like a one. How about how about that? So uh, q2 is a function of q1. Oh, I, I don't have enough. I don't have enough mice, right? So I need to have this. This has to be one as well. Sorry about that. This should be firm two's reaction. It should be q2 as a function of q1. So it should be 9 minus q1 over 2 because this is 9 minus q2 over 2. So check for yourself if you do. You better not get this right. You better get what I said it was. 9 minus q1 over 2. Wonderful. So go ahead and do that. Your work will be better than mine because, well, if anything, you just heard me explain this uh, not to do that. So now we're going to solve our system of reaction curves. So q1 is equal to 9 minus q1 minus or Q1 is equal to 9 minus the quantity 9 minus Q1 over 2. Whole thing divided by 2. And then just multiplying through by 2 and 2 again, get that 4Q1 that should look familiar from before. 18 minus 9 plus Q1 or 3Q1 equals 9 or, you know, this is our Q1 equals 3. Right? And that's exactly what we expected on the basis of the fact that we said, hey, look, the quantity, the Corneau equilibria for this inverse demand where our coefficient on Q's are ones and we have the same marginal cost share between the firms should just be a minus C over 3 so a 12 minus C 3 is 9 over 3 is 3 sure enough so we get our Corno Nash equilibria which is both firms set a quantity of 3 well now we got to find profits so to calculate the profits what should we do well we have to get prices so the price is going to be 12 minus 3 minus 3, or 6. And so we've got this right here. And then we can calculate our profits. So P minus MC times Q. So we have 6 minus 3 times 3, or 9. right? So our individual firm profits are 9. Our industry profits, right? summing up the profits from firm 1 and firm 2 together, would be jointly the industry is going to earn profits of 18. OK, well. Uh, oh, wait a second. So look at this note here. Here's my note checking that we indeed had an equilibrium. So suppose you didn't believe me, we could verify we have a fixed point. So we'll take Q1 
of Q2 is equal to 9 minus Q2 over 2. This is firm 1's reaction to firm 2's choice. Let's drop in 3 here. Sure enough, right? We're going to get uh, we're going to get 3 as firm 1's optimal selection and 3 is firm 2's optimal selection. And that has to be the case, right? Okay, so now we found our industry profits of 18, 9 for each firm. Let's compare this to what would happen if there's a monopoly. So suppose suppose our Corno duopolis decided to merge and become a single firm. Presumably profit should rise. That would match our intuition. Let's see if that happens. So let's compare to the monopoly situation. A monopoly would face the same inverse demand curve, though rather than 12 minus Q1 minus Q2, it would be 12 minus Q because we have only a single firm in the market. And marginal costs presumably are going to be the same for a monopoly as for any firm in the industry because that was just our assumption, though I didn't stipulate that except verbally. What the monopoly is going to do is want to produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Well, remember, if our inverse demand is 12 minus Q, our marginal revenue is going to be 12 minus 2Q because marginal revenue is going to have the same intercept and twice the slope, assuming we have a linear demand. So my marginal revenue is 12 minus 2Q equals 3, or solving my quantity is going to be 4.5, and then the associated price uh, 7.5. And I'm going to calculate my profits, price minus marginal cost times quantity, or 4.5 squared, or 20.25. Yeah, so monopoly profits are higher than, than Corno industry profits, right? So the merged firm is going to do better than the individual firms, than, the, than summing the profits from the individual firms separately. Okay, and so let me go back here. If you were uncomfortable with me just skipping to MR equals MC, you could write down you could write down the monopolies profit function and then use calculus. You'll get the exact same result. So all right. Uh, so right. So it's interesting to compare the industry profits from uh, our Corno firms to our monopoly. What's happening here? Well, the individual firm is producing a quantity of three and then its rival quantity of three. So we're getting a market quantity of six, which is driving down our price to six by the law of demand. Whereas the monopoly is going to restrict its output. It's going to produce only 4.5 units rather than the industry's six units that the duopoly would have produced. And this is going to drive prices up, right? Smaller quantity, higher price by law of demand. So anyway, very good.